so first of all, let me thank you for uh, letting me present in our result here in Siena. My name is Valerio Biancalana, I work in the uh, University of Siena. Uh, the title of my talk is uh, this Tuning the Magnetic Dressing of uh, Atomic Spins. This is the contents of my talk. I will introduce some, uh, with a few words about uh, magnetic dressing and I will show you an application of a magnetic dressing to atomic uh, magnetometry. And then I will spend some more slides to present uh, some results obtained by tuning the dressing. I will show you what I, what I mean by tuning. So let's come to the, to the first part. Uh, the starting point is a bell bloom uh, magnetometer. So we have a cesium cell uh, illuminated with two collinear uh, laser, one of the one to pump and uh, the two to probe. Uh, an interference filter left stopping the pump and then we analyze with the polary polarimeter the, the probe uh, laser. So this is just a standard bell and bloom uh, um, setup. Uh, so what we, what we do is uh, inserting, uh, uh, adding a new field, which is uh, uh, parallel to the probe beam and uh, is tra thus is uh, transverse to the, to the static field. This, uh, uh, the dynamics of spin in such kind of, uh, of um, time-dependent field is well known since a long time. Uh, it was uh, studied in a uh, half century ago by Claude Quentin Nugy and uh, Serge Arosh in, uh, in the 70s. We, we met this kind of system uh, some years ago when we studied uh, how, what happens if uh, BD is not uh, harmonically uh, oscillating. Uh, what is the effect of adding this uh, uh, extra field uh, transverse to B0 is to freeze uh, the precession. To say better, uh, the mm, component of the magnetization along the dressing field, this strong one, uh, keeps oscillating harmonically, but its uh, frequency is reduced by factor J0 uh, Xi, where J0 is the normal uh, Bessel function. And Xi is a parameter which is set by the intensity of this dressing field and its oscillation frequency. This oscillation frequency is usually much larger than the Larmor frequency. By the way, it's not, uh, it's not uh, resonant. Uh, what happens, let's see, an intuitive figure, instead of having a normal, uh, the usual precession of spin around B0, what happens is that when the, the magnetization, when the spin uh, makes this uh, slow rotation at, uh, at, uh, around the B0. It also feels BD, and uh, when it is transverse to both uh, B0 and BD, it starts uh, rotating around BD, but BD is uh, fast oscillating, so it makes a trajectory on the, on the sphere, which is uh, this uh, sort of zigzag. And uh, the final effect is, uh, is that uh, the Y and Z component have, a, a different, let's say, complex behavior, but the X component keeps oscillating slower and this longer trajectory corresponds to uh, a slower uh, omega. Uh, this is uh, a comparison of a theory and, uh, and uh, experimental results. These are the well-known Bessel function and this is uh, the a measured uh, uh, Larmor frequency, let's say, uh, frequency of mx and as you see um, we can change bd0 uh, the amplitude of the dressing field and uh, its frequency uh, they are both large so the ratio can be smaller can be large so we can access a different kind of uh, uh, conditions and the theory perfectly um, match with the, with the experiment so uh, what to do with this, uh, with this kind of uh, dynamics? Uh, I will show you uh, shortly an application of this uh, uh, dressing phenomena. Um, we call it uh, IDEA, which is uh, inhomogeneous dressing enhanced atomic resonance. Uh, I always forgot, forget. And uh, the idea is to, to compensate uh, an uh, inhomogeneous study field with an, an in, uh, inhomogeneous dressing field. Uh, the motivation to do this is to apply in uh, uh, ultra-low field uh, MRI experiment uh, uh, with the frequency encoding. Uh, notice that uh, the, the geromagnetic factor of a proton, so the, the nuclei we are detecting, is much smaller than, uh, than cesium, 
and thus the, the dressing does not affect uh, the proton dynamics, only atomic, uh, the atomic magnetometer uh, feels this uh, dressing field because the C is almost uh, zero for a nuclei. So uh, this is a schematic of the, our setup for uh, with this idea detection, and the, the main scope is to uh, detect uh, uh, MRI signal with uh, uh, atomic uh, magnetometers, which, are, which is uh, uh, in the same place where the nuclei process. This uh, black uh, cylinder is uh, uh, represents uh, the nuclear sample, and we have a differential uh, bell and blue magnetometer. All uh, this stuff is uh, in a static uh, homogeneous field, which is transverse, as in bell and bloom, but it is uh, not, uh, is made uh, inhomogeneous uh, by purpose. And uh, uh, this, the gradient is pretty strong, so the magnetometer could not work in this, uh, in this uh, inhomogeneous field, but uh, we had uh, two uh, dipolar stars for um, producing a dressing field. And these uh, dipoles produce a dressing field which is stronger, where the B0 is, uh, is stronger. And so the dressing is uh, more effective uh, in, the, in, the closer, uh, in the closest part of, uh, of the cell, less effective in the, in the, in the other side. And uh, uh, after adjusting, you can uh, recover the, the um, uh, narrow weight resonance of atoms and detect the, the MRI signal. Uh, so the idea is that uh, the, the, these dipoles mainly work uh, on the sensors, while the gradient uh, remain important for the for the sample. Um, okay, let's see. I will show you just a few results. This is a picture of uh, the cartridge containing the water sample, which is pre-magnetized and then sent uh, in the detection region. And uh, this is uh, an MR, one, uh, one dimensional uh, signal detected with this, uh, with this method. In numbers, let's say uh, the, the magnetic resonance of our bell and blue magnetometer is around uh, 25 hertz. So we can increase it by gradient up to one kilohertz. And thus this uh, inhomogeneous dressing uh, enable to reduce the width back to the, about to the original width. And uh, this made possible to detect uh, uh, MRI. It's not a so excellent uh, figure, but uh, uh, let let make it uh, in a situ. So with a, with a detector close the um, in the close position with respect to the to the to the nuclear sample. Okay. Now let me move to the third part of my talk. This is a bit longer, and uh, I, I, I will uh, discuss about this. Uh, uh, tuning uh, dressing uh, scheme. So uh, consider our experiment, we have one direction which is set by the static fields, and then we, we added this uh, uh, dressing field which is perpendicular to B0, but we are happy to live in a three-dimensional uh, world, so we have a third uh, available direction. And the idea is to apply uh, another oscillating field along this, this available uh, direction. So our uh, our mm, cesium vapor is uh, in a, in a time independent field which it is made uh, this way static field along z and then we have a dressing field a strong one along x and we have this new uh, tuning field which is uh, uh, a comparable amplitude with respect to to b0 it, it is important that it, both of them are smaller than uh, than the dressing and uh, oscillates uh, harmonically uh, at the same frequency of uh, the dressing field or, um, or multiple. Uh, the effect of this uh, extra additional field is uh, that uh, M uh, Mx will keep oscillating harmonically, but uh, at another effective uh, uh, frequency, which is not simple uh, given by B0 and by D, but also include a response to uh, the tuning field. So uh, to summarize the geometry, we had uh, we started from uh, our magnetometer with a uh, with dressing field added, and now we add this uh, extra uh, tuning field, which is perpendicular to both uh, dressing field and starting field. Static field. The 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 system remains the same for other aspects. And what happens? Uh, there is a model. Uh, I, I will not give you any detail of the model. You can find in this uh, recent uh, publication. 
The model is developed on the basis of a, a perturbative approach, and the requirement is mainly that uh, the, the dressing field is much larger than the two others. And there is no constraint between uh, the static field and the uh, tuning field. Uh, what are the uh, what, what is uh, what happens in the space? Uh, so we started from this uh, simple uh, precession rho B zero, as I have already shown that uh, this precession is modified by B D. Please do not ask me what happens here when you have also this uh, harmonic B D oscillating. But the the interesting thing is that beside the dressed uh, frequency J0, uh, omega zero, what, what, we, what we, saw before, what we saw before, we have an additional term which, which depends on the, the, the another Bessel function, JP, and on, on this uh, uh, tuning field, BT. Uh, more particularly in detail, this is the results of the model. Uh, the, the effective uh, Larmor frequency is given by dressed frequency plus this uh, quantity in case that uh, the, the tuning field is uh, harmonic with the uh, odd uh, multiple. Well, why is the sum in quadrature in the case of P7? So we have a dependence on both the amplitude of the T and on the relative phase between uh, the tuning field and the dressing field. We have two handles to adjust the effect of the tuning field. And this term can be as large as, uh, as this or even, even larger. This can be, uh, is a very good handle to control the, the precession. Uh, here, just comparison of uh, experiment and uh, theory about, about this model. Here you see the, the effective alarm of frequency with uh, three different uh, harmonic value for the uh, tuning field uh, uh, frequency. And uh, there is an important point. Uh, this quantity can, can be uh, larger than, uh, is for sure can be larger than uh, the dressed frequency, but even larger than the original uh, Larmo frequency, the undressed one. This is a good point which can be uh, really of interest. And as, as I said before, uh, a way is to control BT, uh, the, the amplitude uh, of BT, but the effect depends on, on uh, the Xi, which is the, the amplitude of the main dressing field. And another handle is in this uh, relative phase uh, phi. In particular, uh, the next, the next uh, uh, picture shows that uh, um, the, the, the omega L given by the model uh, are uh, sinusoidal for odd uh, uh, harmonics and uh, Cosinusoidal, okay, square cosinus in case of, uh, of uh, even harmonics, and, and this is perfectly reproduced by the, uh, the experiment. Dot are experiment and curves are uh, modeled. Uh, okay, I'm almost uh, to the end of my talk. Uh, why it is relevant, what this, uh, this work, uh, this gives a, a new handle to, to manage with uh, processing spins. Uh, it can, can have uh, uh, interest in, for, in the quantum control community because uh, we are able to uh, produce uh, uh, an isotropy, a an, uh, triaxial anisotropy for the Landé factor. The, mm, I, I didn't go in detail, but uh, this precession uh, has three uh, different uh, G factor uh, depending on, uh, on the direction of uh, of the spin. Uh, we can use it and we are starting now to use it uh, in, uh, in an idea setup because it's much easier to produce uh, uh, an inhomogeneous uh, uh, tuning field than uh, the, the stronger uh, dressing field. Uh, can be of interest uh, uh, for people uh, uh, which make critical dressing. Critical dressing when uh, one synchronizes uh, different uh, uh, spin species using uh, the dressing uh, field. And uh, having uh, these additional handles uh, may help to, uh, to facilitate this uh, synchronization. Uh, the fact that uh, the tuning field is an effort which depends on both the amplitude and uh, on the, the relative phase uh, open also the way to, to use uh, this, this uh, scheme to, um, 
produce uh, any current detection system, this uh, magnetic induction tomography technology, which is uh, developed by some design groups. So this is uh, the, the central, uh, the, the main uh, application we thought about uh, uh, tuning dressed uh, system. I thank you for your attention. I wish to thank you all my co-workers in Siena, Giuseppe Bevilacqua, Jordan Cadanceva, Antonio uh, Vigilante and Alessandro who joined the group more recently. He's not in the, in the figure. And again, I want to give my special thanks to the organizer for, for this my nice meeting and for letting me show you our results in, uh, in Siena. Thanks. Great. Thanks a lot, uh, Valerio. I'm sure we have like five minutes for questions. Um, I haven't checked in the chat. Uh, maybe I start with a question. Um, you, uh, can you show the slide with the image again? I just wanted to see at what Lama frequencies you are for the new sorry, PI. Sorry, but uh, I have trouble with the, uh, okay. Can, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, what what is your background field? Yeah, should I, should I go back? Well, if you can show that image again, that would be nice. I'm going back. I don't know. Wait, uh, do you see the, the image or not? Yeah, yeah, we do see it. We do see it. We, I'm at the, the beginning now. So <laughs> ah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> no, I, I meant the, the image that you took of uh, your sample, the uh, MRI image. Ah, the MRI, okay. Yeah. This is. Or, or yeah, this uh, one. Yeah, this one. Okay. Uh, so what frequency, uh, what magnetic field are you at? Uh, magnetic field is here. It's around uh, uh, four, um, four microtesla. So frequency is uh, under 70 hertz for uh, for uh, protons. So it says also, I mean, you want to be we, we work system. usually in a micro Tesla level, two from one to four micro Tesla, and the the gradient here was about 100 uh, uh, femto Tesla per centimeter. So it's also very relevant for this uh, zero to ultra low field ITN uh, with Simic Postelny. And uh, are you in contact with those people? No. Oh, okay. okay. Well, maybe maybe that's interesting for them too. Cool. Are there uh, other questions? Yeah, I want to say I want to say great talk, and I fully agree with with our um, with Arne here. Thanks. Okay. okay so I I don't see uh, I cannot access the the the. the chat and uh, see if there are other written questions. So, so uh, currently it's not. It's appeared from my screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we are also already losing uh, people. We had a peak attendance of 102 people uh, and we ran three minutes over time. I think this is as good as Ilya did, uh, who uh, also just uh, re-arrived or returned uh, from yesterday. Maybe everybody is tired and uh, after two hours of like interesting talks, so maybe it's uh, time to call it off. Um, so let's thank uh, Valerio again for his nice presentation. And, and actually thanks all to, to all speakers for remaining on time and for giving very interesting talks. And um, thanks to Ilya, Sabrina and Sven for organizing this meeting and for all their help, even though that Ilya wasn't there. So I actually wanted to thank you while you were not there, Ilya. Now you're here. It takes a bit of the, the excitement off for me. <laughs> and then also, uh, of course, thanks uh, to the Science Committee for uh, supporting um, this uh, Zoom WAPM. And thanks to all of you for staying on for two hours. A very disciplined set of people. So 